Hi everyone, Nefertil Tech here and today I would like to show you how you can actually overclock and underclock an Nintendo Switch and how you will also be able to view the current frames per second on a Nintendo Switch. So we're going to be using something called a Tesla overlay which allows us to have a small overlay or large one depending on what you have, whatever you want on the left side of your Nintendo Switch and um, that way you can not only monitor the CPU, GPU and memory clocks but you can also view the temperature of your Nintendo Switch as well as the FPS of the game that you're playing. And for example, if the game targets 30 FPS, but it sometimes drops to maybe 25 or even 20 FPS, you will be able to overclock either or both the CPU and GPU. And you can configure that on a handheld basis when you, whenever you plug in a USB charger or if you're using the official Nintendo Switch charger. So this way you can extract more performance from a Nintendo Switch in intensive titles, but also for larger titles such as Stardew Valley that I have right here, you will be able to underclock your Nintendo Switch to be able to get better battery life on your Switch. So this is pretty awesome. And yeah, you may have heard of Tesla and SysClock, which, you, which we will be using for this tutorial. But I'll also show you how you can install Salty SD, as well as the NX FPS overlay module, which adds an FPS counter to our games. So that's pretty neat. So let's go ahead and start this tutorial. So of course you will need a switch that's modified and it's running the Atmosphere custom firmware. So if you go to system settings and scroll down to system, you will see that I'm currently using the latest official firmware 15.0.1 as well as the latest release of Atmosphere version 1.4.0 on an MUMMC partition and if you still have a stock Nintendo Switch and you want to know how you can install a custom firmware then I will leave a link in the video description where I show you step by step how to install the Atmosphere custom firmware on your Switch. So then afterwards once you've uh, got Atmosphere up and running and you are prepared to uh, follow this guide you first of all need to power off your Nintendo Switch and we're gonna need to grab the micro SD card and plug it into our PC so we can actually copy over some files. So over on your PC you will actually need to download quite a few files. So I will of course drop all links in the video description. Make sure to download the latest release of all the files that I mentioned in this video. So first of all we will need the overlay menu, the Tesla overlay menu. So go to this GitHub page and download the OVL menu.zip file. Then we also need the annex OVL loader.zip right here to go along with it. Then we want to have the status monitor overlay OVL file. So this allows us to view the clocks on an Nintendo Switch and later also be able to view the FPS. So make sure to download this OVL file as well. Then we want to download SysClock. So SysClock allows us to change the clock speeds on an Nintendo Switch. So make sure to grab this zip file as well. Then we will need Salty NX. So Salty NX is a plugin which allows us to view the frames per second counter inside of games, inside the status overlay. So make sure to download the latest release of this as well. And then lastly, we will need the NX FPS zip file. So this is the plugin that shows us the FPS and it goes along with the Salty NX files. So if you don't, use Salty NX and NX FPS, then you will still be able to view the clock speeds on Nintendo Switch to view some hardware uh, statuses such as the uh, CPU temperature, GPU temperature, and I think PCB temperature as well as the fan speed, but you will not be able to view the FPS of your game that you're currently running. So if you want to be able to view the FPS of your games, make sure to grab both Salty NX as well as annex FPS as well. And, and download and extract all these files to play somewhere in desktop. So I've just put them all in this uh, folder right here. So then you want to open up another window. You want to go to your micro SD card. And now you want to drag and drop these files. So let me make sure that this name is correct since I've downloaded it multiple times. Uh, what you need to do first is let's go ahead with the OVL menu and then drag and drop the switch folder inside a zip file to your micro SD card. I've already done this for most of these files. Then you want to go ahead and go to the annex OVL loader, drag and drop the atmosphere folder to your micro SD card. Then you want to go ahead and go to sysclock, 
drag and drop all these folders and files to a micro SD card as well. Then you want to go ahead and go to Salty NX, drag and drop these files to a micro SD card. Go to NX FPS, drag and drop the Salty SD folder to a micro SD card. And then lastly, you want to go ahead, open up the switch folder, go to the dot overlays folder. And right here, you want to drag and drop the status monitor overlay. So now we have all the files that we will need for this tutorial. So close out of these windows, grab your micro SD card and plug it back into your Nintendo Switch. And now, of course, we will need to boot our Switch into the recovery mode. So I will be using this RCM jig. And if you don't have an RCM jig or if you need an SD adapter or a USB cable, whatever, I do have some affiliate links in the video description for you to check out. But to boot our switch into the recovery mode, I'll just slide in the RCM jig, press and hold the volume up button as well as the power button for a few seconds. Then I will grab my USB cable and plug the switch into the PC. Now over on our PC, I will be using Tango RCM and I will inject the Hackerty payload to boot to Hackerty. You can unplug the USB cable and I can remove the RCM jig. Okay, attach the Joy-Con again. Now I go to payloads, go to the Fusey bin file to boot into the Atmosphere custom firmware. And as I said, if you don't know how to actually boot to a custom firmware and how to install a custom firmware, I will leave a link to the full Atmosphere guide in the video description as well. So I'm using an MU MMC partition, so my switch will boot to a micro SD card. So I'll unlock the Nintendo Switch, and now if we go to our album, so to our homebrew menu, you can see that we do have the SysClock Manager installed. So using SysClock Manager, we can change the clock behavior on a game by game basis. So I do have Stardew Valley installed on the Nintendo Switch, and now I can change the clock speeds uh, for docked mode, handheld mode, for charging mode, for the official charging mode, and for a USB charger mode. So you can just mess around and since Stardew Valley is a lighter title, we can actually underclock our switch. So stock speeds are 1020 megahertz for the CPU with a boost to 1785 in some loading screens. And the GPU clocks depend on whether you're using your switch in handheld mode then you have a max clock speed of 460 and in dark mode it's 768 but of course you can also mess around with these clocks so you will need to attach a charger if you want to go uh, any further than 460 or 537 I'm not really sure in handheld mode and in dark mode if you're using the official charger you can go to 921 megahertz to extract some additional performance and the memory frequency can be set to 1600 megahertz so that's also the default clock speed for dark mode but in handheld mode it's limited to 1331 so you can overclock it for handheld mode and there's even an extension which i may cover in another video that allows us to bump up the memory speed as well for some bandwidth limited titles but for this video i will just be showing you how you can actually uh, open up this menu inside the game as well and how you can also take a look at the FPS. So if you're running a demanding title such as Doom Eternal, for example, then you can see what the default clock behaviors are and what frames you get uh, using the clock speeds. But if you want to actually extract more performance on your Nintendo Switch, you can open up the overlay inside the game, mess around with the clocks and see how it affects the performance and the FPS. So what I will do is I will load up form right here see and i will show you how you can open up the tesla overlay and view the status of your game uh, using this overlay so I'll just load into this game give it a second here to load and i will go outside and to actually view the overlay so the tesla overlay menu you want to press and hold l1 r1 and at the same time want to press r3 and deep it down just briefly and there we go so now we do have status monitor as well as sys clock so sys clock as i said allows us to change the clock speeds so this is the same app that i've just shown you in the homebrew menu and here you can change the app profile 
So as I said, you can actually change the CPU, GPU and memory speeds and you will also see what the current clock speeds are in the upper left corner. But what we can also do is if we go back that we can go to status monitor and now we can go ahead and view, well, uh, the FPS of this game, um, the core utilization. So we do have four cores and you can see which cores are being utilized by this game. You can see our GPU load and you can see our RAM usage as well as the speed that it's running at. And of course, some temperatures right here as well as the fan speed. But this overlay is quite big and well, now we can also not play this game. So if you go back, uh, if you want to go back uh, out of this menu, you want to press and hold L3 and R3 at the same time. And now we can go back. So I like to use the mini overlay. So the mini overlay is way smaller as the name suggests. And now you will see the CPU utilization and the clock speed. You will see the GPU clocks as well as the utilization our RAM, uh, some temperatures, fan speed, our performance. So this is quite nice to use for some more demanding titles. If you see some performance drops, you can mess around with the clocks and see if it improves the performance. But since Stardew Valley is actually a very light and easy to run title, we can also end the clock. So let's do that. So again, press and hold L3 and R3, go back, go to CS clock, add that profile, and I'm currently in handheld mode, so I can drop down the CPU speed. So here you can see it's 1020 currently. So let's drop that to 816. There we go. Our GPU is currently running at 307. So let's see if we can do it with 210 or 230 actually. And our memory is currently running at 1331. And let's drop it down to 1065. Now go back, go back. Uh, go to the status monitor, go to the mini overlay, and now we can see if the game still runs at 60 FPS uh, with this ender clock. And if not, we can see what's the bottleneck. So we can either see that the GPU utilization uh, goes to 100% or the CPU utilization. But I think that Stardew Valley will be fine using these clocks. So now for titles such as Stardew Valley, you can actually unclock the switch and extend the battery life. So that's pretty nice. And as I said, for some more demonic titles, you can actually overclock the switch and view the FPS counter right here. So yeah, I think that's basically the, the video. So yeah, it works great for Stardew Valley. And this way you can maybe improve the battery life of your switch by 20 to 25%. It runs cooler. The fan will not be as loud. So it's currently at 0%. <laughs> so that's nice. And we can still enjoy this game. So yeah, that's basically the video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos, guys. Peace out.